Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Easy Conversations, a podcast about having easy conversations. I'm your host, Furkan Dandia. In this week's episode, I sit down with an old friend of mine, Gaurav Gupta, who is the founder and owner of the Leela Eco Spas here in Calgary. Um, in this episode, Gaurav talks about the difficult decisions he's made throughout uh, his professional career, from leaving a secure engineering job in the oil and gas industry to becoming an entrepreneur, and then after becoming an entrepreneur, also making tough decisions with his business. Uh, and more recently, he had to shut down a new venture he had started because of the pandemic and pivot. Uh, in this episode, what you'll see is that we all face tough decisions in all facets of our lives and more often than not we have to listen to our gut and follow what feels right and that's what Gaurav highlights in this episode. Um, if at the end of the episode you can leave a review I would truly appreciate it. Gaurav so welcome to the podcast uh, again appreciate you uh, doing this and uh, yeah taking the time to come on the podcast and chat with me. Yeah, thank you for coming for the opportunity, and I look forward to to sharing. Uh, um, yeah, uh, my journey, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. Um, yeah, just for the listeners, if you don't mind, you know, kind of introducing yourself. Uh, I guess for us, we met in, uh, in at McGill in engineering, so uh, we were. <laughs> yeah, we were actually in some of the courses together too, so that was cool. But yeah, I'll let yeah. you uh, talk about your. Yeah, your life there. Sure, sounds good, Rukan. Yeah, like uh, like you said, we we're going to engineering together, and uh, uh, I graduated from McGill in '06. Uh, moved out west to Calgary to work as an engineer here. Uh, I was working with SNC Lavalin for a couple of years before moving up north to Fort McMurray. There, I was working with Sunco Energy. While being in uh, in Fort McMurray, it gave me um, it gave me a lot of quality time with myself, um, you know, a lot of friends, a lot of, a um, lot of time with, you know, you know, whom I want to spend with. And also it took me on, um, uh, on a journey to sort of see who I really am uh, or what I really wanted. Engineering, for example, was, you know, my parents or my society's sort of um, wishes or their path for me. The first job was a natural transition from the studies to a job. Mm -hmm. so on and so forth right but I never really looked into what I wanted to do um, you know uh, what was my passion and in Fort McMurray then I started so sort of you know look at more of an entrepreneurial route of um, you know for example opening a, a restaurant over there or just anything entrepreneurial as, um, over there and then in the seek of, uh, of who I wanted to be, I moved on. I, I did my MBA from, from INSEAD in, in France. Um, that was good 10 month. Again, time to really hone on on what I want to do and what I want to do you know, with, uh, with the future, future uh, career. And um, yeah, I got a couple of job offers as well while I was there in Singapore, in, in London. And it didn't really jive with my sort of long-term thinking of, mm -hmm. you know, in quality time with my, with my wife, my, and then we have one daughter as well. Um, and so we moved back home uh, to Calgary um, because we have a good support system here. My in-laws are here. And of course, I had a job back here with Sunco Energy, but the intent was to really find something, uh, something of a small business um, in the medium to long term so that I can, you know, finally be an entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. uh, um, so coming back to, to Sankur, while it provided me with some great opportunities, you know, and of course, in, you are moving somewhere else. I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm quitting and I, I, I don't want to, um, I want to do something else. So basically, I quit in 2014, March or April, having really nothing on, on my plate, mm -hmm. uh, but just with a vision and desire to do something different. And um, while, while searching for things which aligned with me, I came upon this uh, this business, which was being sold by a broker, uh, a small yoga studio and, and a massage place in Bridgeland, uh, up for grabs. So without really looking too much into it, no due diligence almost, I I took it over in July 2014. 
And at that time, while when I took it over, I, I felt it would be more of a learning curve for me to yeah. learn about the business, you know, and uh, spend a little time in it, but not really full time in it. But the more and more I got involved in small business, it became really interesting to me how, what do you want? Because being thinking as thinking like an entrepreneur was good, but being an entrepreneur, you know, you really, uh, it's on the ground, right? Yeah. So if you wanted to do, you could do it. That was a very big change for my oil and gas career. And um, yeah. second was, of course, you know, all, all the stuff which came to it, right? If a toilet plugs, guess what? You can spend $200 calling somebody else or you can do it yourself, you know, mm -hmm. or uh, covering a shift. So a lot of, a lot of learnings came on the go. And the more and more I got involved, more fun it became. And uh, I guess growing from there was a natural transition, um, you know, as we can expand that business model uh, onto onto a different level, right? So, so that's yeah. been a journey like um, since, you know, I guess Miguel to now. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's been okay so far. Of course, it has its own challenges every day, but uh, yeah, I'm not getting yet my move from oil and gas to here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's, uh, that's great. Thanks for sharing that. And uh, just for the listeners, like, um, like where were you born and raised and, you know, like, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, how was that moving to Canada and stuff like that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I was born and raised in India, in, in Delhi, in uh, India. Yeah. Uh, at the age of um, 17, 18, um, my uncle, he called me to Canada because he um, his sons had done really well in, in, in McGill as well. And uh, he had a vision for me as well. So, um, yeah, I came to Montreal uh, in at the age of 18 in 2002 to do my bachelor's in chemical engineering from McGill. And how was that, like, uh, that transition to move from India at that age, uh, almost on your own, right, and and come to, like, a new place? Um, yeah, you know, I'm, uh, I talk to my daughter a lot about it nowadays. Um, it was, um, I'm glad I was put through that test, that challenge, um, that transition, because it made me a bit more stronger, more persistent, I think. Um, I couldn't even understand people when they were talking, you know, uh, when I landed in Canada, English was my second language, right? And uh, uh, it was quite challenging figuring out everything from, you know, the comfort of your home to being living in a different country, different part of the world with different culture, everything is so different, right? But, you know, um, I mean, uh, you know, I think we became friends that year too. And um, you know, a lot of other people as well were there who were, you know, who were friends, who were uh, our support system. And um, yeah, the more challenging situation is, more different or more sort of, I think, stronger you become. So um, I would say quite challenging initially. But um, when I look back at it, I look at it with the, with the fond sort of memories because they were, you know, they were definitely, you overcame them. And then, you know, you sort of became part of the system. And then you... Yeah. Uh, just enjoy being there <laughs> yeah no for sure and and one of the things you touched on uh and i just want to talk about a little bit more but you know you said your parents had a vision for you to be an engineer and we hear that quite a bit in the east indian culture and myself included you know it's kind of the same thing yeah. um yeah i mean obviously you know you graduated as an engineer you found work did it and you said it what didn't feel right. Can you maybe explain that a bit more? Like, uh, what about it didn't feel right? And and how were you able to work for the years you did work? Well, I remember my um, my first day at work, sitting at 2 p.m. in my cubicle. I'm like, oh, so I cannot go out right now, you know? Yeah. That was almost like that, that thought was like, oh, I'm like, uh, not enslaved, but my my mobility my decision making my flexibleness my freedom is not there anymore you know mm -hmm. if i job right especially i was in a junior engineer so i couldn't really you know take whatever right so i just felt it unnatural for us to be stuck in an office environment for the time dictated by somebody else so um of course with time i grew very much used to it i didn't even think much about it you know uh, that i'm i'm not in the, in the work but the um, my like I worked in engineering career for two not engineering consulting company for a couple of years, and whatever I worked upon that project didn't get didn't get executed. It either was shelved or some something it was. You know, at Sunco Energy as well, the tests which I was doing as an optimization engineer, uh, a lot of tests were there to prove that it can't be done. You know, so a lot of things which I worked upon in my career as an engineer didn't really help in providing any value to mm -hmm. the 
the place where I live. And to me, getting my paycheck in the other day for the work which is not contributing to the to the economy, in my opinion, um, wasn't satisfying or or fulfilling to me. Yeah. And uh, um, you know, while it wasn't hard work, it wasn't like I was a bad engineer or you know somebody who didn't do the work. But I just didn't enjoy that incomplete feeling in myself day in day out. And then after my NCIAD MBA, I came with very high hopes and ambitions of um, you know, working in something where I can actually contribute. But my role again was something which didn't really allow me to contribute that much again. So I came to a point where I was like, you know what, I've given it enough of a shot and uh, I'm not at peace with myself mm-hmm. to, to work on these things which don't give me any sort of happiness, right? So it became a very natural transition, not, not even planned in any way to to exit my my work environment and not to say when i exit the work environment even today like you know i'm not go back to it because you never know right because yeah me and you know it's a safe way to, to earn but um i want to give myself a, a, um a very real chance of um of doing something which uh, satisfies me or or helps me in being uh, feeling fulfilled Oh, yeah, no, I completely understand that for sure. And I've kind of been on the same journey. Um, But uh, so had, say, in those projects you were working on, had the outcome been different, would you, do you think you would have continued to do engineering or it was just your passion was somewhere else and you would have left anyways? Yeah, I, um, what I've noticed about my life um, is the most impactful decisions of my life come from a place when I'm feeling down, you know, like, for example, in SNC Lavalin, I was one evening, I had no work. So I applied for masters of engineering that day and just randomly, you know, and yeah. I did an MNG course based for whatever on the side, right? Um, in CIAD MBA, I wanted to do MBA for a long time, but when we found out my wife is pregnant, we're like, you know what, she's going to be matching anyway, so let's go for MBA. So then I really worked hard on getting admission somewhere in Europe, you know, just to, so we can have a, um, a good one year together. So I I feel uh, even, you know, even um, Lila as well. So I feel like a lot of these decisions come from a point where you're compelled to make a decision um, to make a change. So while, uh, like you said, if those projects hadn't happened, I may not have made that decision to quit. But I think you know, with time, that point would have come. Mm-hmm. I've been because I was, um, uh, if I was happy in my job, you know, satisfied, fulfilled. I, you're right. I mean, I may still be, you know, um, uh, uh, in in my career as an engineer. However, if I was not happy, I would think I would have found some place in my career where I had to quit, uh, where it didn't wasn't possible for me to, you know, go and 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 work on it. Like, to be honest, I, I never drank alone earlier, you know, and um, after my my stint uh, at, at Suncor, after my MBA, I just, I just was so, like, unhappy, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, like, those, some of those things which I did at that time, I feel that they were really catalysts for me to make those decisions um, to, to quit a job and then, you know, and go for an entrepreneurial career, hopefully, with that is later. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And uh, I guess another question. So, so what pushed you towards an MBA uh, and not something else in terms of, you know, pursuing masters? Was it because of that entrepreneurial drive you had? You mentioned in Fort Mac, you were even considering opening a restaurant. Um, so yeah. So what, why the MBA? Was it because you felt like it would allow you to get that understanding of, uh, you know, about a business and being able to run your own business? No, I, to be honest, I was looking forward to my MBA to really discover myself, to um, know people from different backgrounds and just to explore, you know. Um, I, I had done bachelor's in ChemEng and I did master's in ChemEng too from UFC and a lot of theoretical knowledge, you know, was already sort of, I was already in classrooms and, you know, learned uh, a lot of those things, right? Yeah. Over, MBA to me was a place where I can actually go out, seek what I want to do, and then choose what I want to do from there. So, uh, for example, I didn't apply to any technical-oriented universities, you know, with a two-year program or 
somewhere which is known for like master of finance or, or um, those type of universities. I applied more to universities which are more known for entrepreneurship and provide a lot of content and environment to 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 uh, foster um, uh, that ability. So that was my main reasoning. And not to say, you know, we living in Fort McMurray for three years, I wanted to go somewhere really, you know, um, different and uh, I guess nice. And uh, France or Europe really sort of attracted us for the uh, for all the things that it offers and, and surrounding area. So it was sort of com combination of, um, of things. I mean, I did get into London Business School as well. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't like the idea of LBS because, again, it's very, very, uh, from what I had known at the time, it was more theoretical, more um, engrossed in, in, um, you know, in, from that aspect. And I wanted a place where I could just go and soak what I want to soak, you know, and, uh, and take it from there. For sure. For sure. And uh, I guess, so when you decided to quit, um, I mean, which is pretty bold because, uh, you know, that's where most people, when they're stuck in their jobs or they want to start a business or be entrepreneurs, that's kind of the hardest part is being able to quit your job, yeah. right? Or some people yeah. will, will still work and then do a side hustle. But yeah. what what made you, what, what was that tipping point for you to be like, okay, you know what, I'm done. And I'm like, did you have a plan B? Um, yeah, like what? What was your plan? <laughs> no, I think that you know the, the tipping point was when my boss, uh, she made a pressed a print button, okay, <laughs> and then she called me, hey girl, can you give me the printout? Then I walked past her office, got the printout to her office. I was like, oh, I wasn't meant to do this, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that day I was like, okay, I'm done, right? And um, yeah. So, like I said, it wasn't planned at all, but I just reached a point where it wasn't really for me. And um, if it was planned, for example, like you said, you know, a lot of people go for side hustle, um, side uh, job until it makes a little bit of money um, and hope to, to switch over when it starts making enough money to at least take care of their expenses. So it, it becomes more of a planned move at that, at, at that point, right? Um, but here in this case, I, I really didn't have a plan. I had uh, six months of, uh, you know, saving set aside for us to be like, okay, if nothing works out, I'm going back to a job, but here it is, six months of short, right? So it was very much of a gamble, um, but it, was, it didn't feel like a gamble at all. I, in fact, took a month off after quitting Suncor to go around the world again, just, you know, to explore and, yeah. and came back in no hurry. I was looking for a business because... Um, to me at that time, it, it didn't seem like a gamble. It seemed quite natural that you're looking for what you want to get, you know? Yeah. Um, but at the same time, when I look back at it, I do feel, oh my God, you know, oh shit, it didn't work out, right? And very well, it not have, right? But it was just lucky to, uh, that some things uh, aligned to, uh, to, for me to be part of it. Um, yeah. But I mean, uh, to, to be honest, like I, I talk to many people nowadays, right? And then one thing which I, I, I used to be a quite cautious entrepreneur in, in my first few years of entrepreneurship. But now I, I do really recommend to people like, you know, go after what you want. Other things will figure itself out. Yeah. Because, um, you know, if we take step after step, it, it, uh, every step we are, we are thinking, cautious, and we tend to fall back to a safety net, you know? Yeah. But, uh, one jump is required where like you have no safety net, where you're going to do it. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. And you have to step, out of your comfort zone to be successful. Um, so yeah, like walk me through the the how this idea of a spa came about. And you know, obviously you mentioned um, the first location was the Bridgeland location here in Calgary, but then you've expanded quite a bit. And uh, yeah, like explain how all that's going and how that's coming along. Yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, like it was very unplanned to get to even take over spa. Um, I, I, my first massage ever in my life was after I bought the business. So, so you can see how <laughs> much I did, you know, like yeah. literally. And I, I remember like, I'm like, Oh, oh I didn't, I should have done it before, you know? So it was, it was a gamble is a risk, but something about the business stuck to me. 
which was probably a bit more than the hardcore financials or the or the offerings. Um, and what stuck to me in the business was the vibe, the feeling which it gave to people when they came out from their either yoga session or treatments. And third, supporting the idea of employing a, a lot of um, you know women and um, somehow those uh, three things really clicked to me and then um, I, I, I took over the business and, and, and that's it really, there's nothing more to it. Um, and to be honest, that's the basis of our, of our growth as well uh, is one, we want to create the, the environment where somebody is feeling welcome, where somebody is uh, want to detox from the normal life, um, that it's an oasis from, from, from the outside world. Um, and second, um, you know, provide the, the relaxation from our, you know, or, or effectiveness from our treatments. And third, uh, supporting a lot of the people in, in Calgary. And um, I'm, I'm really proud of it because it's all of us in together, not just me, you know, not just them. So it's really a team, team sport. Um, going back to the, the business side of things, uh, when I came to the, to the small business world, I realized a few things, and uh, I mean, it could be really helpful as well. One, in small business at that time, and at that time, I'm just about five or six years back, a lot of the small business owners were not very educated or were not very um, sort of, they didn't transition from a corporate professional life to a small business life. So I had a lot of things in which I experienced uh, in, my, in my working career, which I can now execute. Um, you know, here and uh, really see how it works here. Second, um, uh, so because of the ownership of some of these places, which is not by these, you know, um, by these individuals, a lot of the inefficiencies exist in small business. So even the, the place which I took over had a lot of inefficiencies and um, by doing some small, small things as, you know, being engineers, we know a lot about supply and demand. We know a lot about, you know, I mean, just simple things, how to reduce yeah. cost, how to reduce revenue, right? Uh, that wasn't there. And uh, as soon as I realized the amount of efficiencies which you can work on, it became fun because all you do is work on reducing cost and increase revenue while increasing the quality of the, of the surface off offerings you have. So just to give you an example, and this was, I think, game changer for us at Lila. Mm -hmm. third or more than one third of our space was taken up by a yoga studio, okay? Now, yoga studio had the revenue which couldn't even match the cost of the yoga teachers, okay? Yeah. Now, when I increased the yoga prices, I met up with a lot of flack from the clients. And suddenly one night I thought about it, you know what, let's remove yoga. And let's put some massage rooms over there, which make money. Easy peasy. Yeah. Seems similar. Uh, seems uh, simple, right? Yeah. What simple thought really enabled us to get four more rooms in a space with no extra overhead cost because there's no front desk for those extra four rooms. Yeah. And uh, remove any sort of uh, loss from uh, from the yoga business, right? By making that move, we helped us a lot financially. And because we were able to do more massages or more uh, facials or more waxing, we were helping the community as well in, in, in our service offerings, right? So uh, there were small, small, basically optimization which we made in the first year, year and a half, which helped us in getting to a point where we can open up one more location and execute some of our, um, you know, decision-making uh, in these things. And our decision-making revolved um, purely around providing value to the client, like not overcharging them, However, not getting taken advantage of by these by so many discounts, yeah. by paying the, um, the therapist properly, by paying the friend properly, by supporting them if they have a sick kid at their house or they can't make it work because of migraine or you know whatever situation may be, right? Um, and and slowly and steadily we uh, we sort of uh, built uh, a community of of people you know who work at Lida who understand and support each other, you know. So it becomes not as per contract. But as per as per human nature or humanness, uh, to work with each other. So uh, that was the basis of our of our story, and that's what we are doing in in all the new locations what we open. And people who fit in fit in. People who don't fit in, you know, don't fit in. So yeah, 
Um, that's sort of the, the working methodology behind our, our um, business. That's awesome. So, you know, you had that first location and you obviously experimented with it and you uh, also had to learn a lot of things in terms of, you know, you mentioned like little things that you had to fix uh, rather than paying a contractor to come do yeah. it, right? Yeah. Um, at what point did you feel comfortable enough with the business model uh, that you were able to start looking for other locations or were you already convinced that, you know, there was a future in this business and you didn't really wait to pr see the results before you started expanding? Like maybe explain that rationale and kind of how you proceeded. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a very good question for Khan and um, this is where the scalability things uh, come into play. Uh, when I became part of small business because I was part of corporate job, I, yep. I didn't anticipate myself to be a front desk. You know, that's not why I got the job, right? Or, or the business. Yeah. I didn't anticipate me to be on call when every RMT calls in sick or every client has a has a complaint, right? I got the I got the business to be for it to be a business, you know. Um, so one of the first thing which we did before even we were profitable is we hired somebody off desk. Off desk means somebody who's not on the desk, but will take care of the business anyways. And that enabled, that helped me to have the time available to look into optimizations, to look into expansion, um, to really look at the softer side of things properly. And uh, um, uh, the, the SPA director, Amy, who's still uh, you know, with us, and she's a big part of Leela, uh, she joined us in 2015, March or April, I think. And um, I think our next location, the, we opened two locations in 2016 March. So within a few months later, uh, we sort of signed up for our second and third location. And uh, we, had, we had to shut one down because it did, one of them didn't work. But uh, uh, yeah, it was sort of about, uh, I would say, a year to year and a half, um, at which point we made the next move mm -hmm. uh, to open a, a newer location and, uh, and yeah, let's do our offerings from there. But then again, the the I think the uh, the scalability or the possibility of adding a second location came in because I wasn't involved in every small part of the business. You know, I right. enabled, I was thankfully having enough time to work on the what's next because a lot of time in small business we do get we do tend to get up involved in every part of the business because it, it is costly. It's very difficult yeah. to uh, work on those things. Um, yeah, to have to outsource each and everything, but uh, because I was fortunate enough to have that sort of buffer, um, we were able to sort of go to our you know few other locations. Of course, and and did you strategically pick the locations, and then uh, based on the locations, did you change the services you were offering, or your kind of your model is like no, the services will be the same. That's our brand. Um, yeah, like maybe explain some of that. Like what was, like how did you pick your locations um, and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah. Uh, this was in 2016, you know, um, I would really want a location plus 15. Yeah. Because, but more like corporate, you know, people and uh, who have benefits and all. So I just one random, I was, I was doing an oil and gas conference actually in 2015 sometime. And then I walked into then an empty space international hotel and just asked for a GM, GM came in, and, you know, it, it took a few months for negotiations because um, it was going to undo some transition ownership at that, at that hotel. Um, but we, we got a location plus 15 because we wanted to be right in the corporate center. The, um, we, were, we weren't set upon what we were, who we were at that time. Uh, because beggars can't be choosers and we didn't have a lot of capital to deploy to you know, make each location care to us. So we were looking for either ways to uh, uh, expand um, sort of um, at not very high capital cost uh, or, or take over locations, which, um, and, and, and some of the options were either take over locations, which were shut down and then take it over, or which had less cost renovations to bring it up. So initially, first couple of locations, we, we, uh, we I think we did quite smartly by not putting too much money in. And, but nowadays when we open location, we, we, 
found that it's better for us to just, you know, initially go in and then um, make it of what we are so that we are able to align it with the rest of our brand and we don't need to change up too many things from there. Okay, cool, cool. No, that's uh, interesting. And um, so you mentioned one of the, the things that appealed to you also about this business was the vibe that, you know, yeah. you would notice people leaving the spa they had a certain yeah. vibe and why was that appealing to you and what vibe are you talking about? Perfect. I'm glad you, you talk about that for come because that's the basis of who we are, to be honest, you know, um, when like a, a, in the oil and gas industry, I never saw any result what we did the period, you know, I loved working there. Um, when I did with, with amazing colleagues, you know, work was, uh, when as an engineer, what was good but I never saw an actual result where, hey, if you're just starting by the front desk and you ask a guy or a girl coming up for massage, hey, how was your session? And the way they explain it, you can see it in, the, in their face, pure bliss, you know, it's yeah. <laughs> like they are, like they had a great one hour, you know? Yeah. And this is something which our business enabled, you know, which our business connected with yeah. us, with the RMT, and of course with the person who needs that session too, right? Mm -hmm. So that to me is fulfillment. That to me is uh, we contributed to your wellness. We contributed to your life. You know, we made it a bit better. Um, I, 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 you know, in all of our conversation with the staff, I'm really, really clear. Like people come here as a break from the normal life. People come here to let go of normal life. This is yeah. not a grocery store. This is not a pharmacy. This is a place where they want to feel valued. And this is what we're gonna do over here. You know, and that's the vibe which. Uh, which was there, and I think it still is, um, at our locations where where people uh, come in not only for their physical wellness but their mental wellness as well. And um, you can go get a massage anywhere. You can go to Cairo office. You can go for other spas, you know. But why do you come to Lila for a massage? And you do come because not only do you get an amazing massage uh, session, but you also get treated like a normal human being. You also get treated, you know in a way that you are valued and, um, you know, you are respected and, you know, you're protected. So uh, all of these things provide you that relaxation, not only from your body, but from mind as well. And that's the kind of um, you know, place I want to create, um, you know, at any of our new locations or wherever it is, where it's, um, it is combined physical and mental wellness all in one space. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Uh, and I think the, the mind aspect is definitely important. Um, and it must have been tough to get rid of the yoga uh, option in your spa because, you know, yoga does help with that too, right? So, um, uh, so I guess, you know, now I, I wanted to understand from your perspective with the pandemic, um, you know, and then we had the lockdown earlier in the year and we might be looking at another potential lockdown and yeah. who knows by the time this episode uh, comes out, we might be in a lockdown. So as yeah. a small bit local business, um, what are your fears and concerns and uh, with this pandemic and how has it impacted you? So it has impacted us greatly um, when we were locked down for three months, it was unprecedented, you know, for all of us. And we weren't sure what's going to happen, how business come back up, all the expenses which were happening without us being open. You know, they are they are they are a lot for small business. Um, I do want to say though that we had a lot of support. We meaning small business uh, from the government, and um, you know, our, most of our landlords agreed to participate in the in the rent subsidy. Uh, we got some base subsidy back as well. So. Uh, those the 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 loan as well. So that those all things really helped us mm -hmm. being uh, being afloat and 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 still be in a strong position. And uh, I mean, you're right. The lockdown may be upon us. Hopefully not. But we, we never know. Whatever is better for society. But I do feel supported by the government uh, by the different programs what they're bringing it out. And I feel fortunate and very grateful to be here in Canada where government is stepping up and doing something from what I've heard from other, or noticed from other uh, countries, uh, you're on your own, you know, but, uh, but yeah. I'm not here. So I'm, I'm, I'm really, really uh, grateful. I do think that if we go to lockdown, we'll of course have a lot of financial losses, but um, you know, everybody goes through these things nowadays and 
is part of the journey, I guess. So I'm not really overly concerned uh, that uh, this will be the end of us and all, but because we will come out of it, uh, hopefully, hopefully in a, in a few months time. Um, yeah, so I, I, you know, I'm not stressing. I'm not, um, I'm not really concerned crazy about this lockdown because one, I can't do much about it. And second, we have the support from the government, which will kick in, which will at least take care of a lot of our expenses, which is what our main thing is, right? I mean, we do not yeah. make lockdown, but at least they shouldn't do too much of the, of the expenses side. Yeah, no, I guess, uh, I mean, it must be a little bit, uh, hard to see other small businesses shutting down right and a lot of them shut down after the first lockdown um so so i mean that's it is concerning right um Uh, you know futon like our uh, our bar on on 17th avenue um we opened on feb 29th to march 1st right yes we shut down march 17th and we barely got it going right yeah Uh, then we opened back up again in may and and we have to shut the space down again in August and or September first week, I think, right? Yeah. The, um, if if bar was the only business I had, then uh, I would, yeah, I would be under for sure. It was very, very we had lost a lot of money that project. But uh, and 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 similarly, like a lot of the industry, even today, I don't, I don't understand how they can be open because the expenses are so high in this industry, and people don't want to go outside to drink too much. From what I know, you know. Yeah. Uh, socialize and it must be so tough because outside their control to uh, to do anything about it right so yeah it's definitely crazy <laughs> times for sure yeah and like maybe explain uh you know uh, what kind of you know obviously you had to convert that uh that bar into a spa uh and you mentioned you you guys were open for four months roughly but you know, at what point did you decide that, okay, enough's enough. This isn't like, we're not making any money here. That must've been a tough decision too, because obviously you guys had invested a lot of money in the infrastructure and the way it was set up to have to convert it. Yeah, it was, it was a tough decision, but again, it was a natural decision. I mean, in, um, I remember in June end, literally a month after opening, I, uh, I couldn't see it going ahead too much. And uh, of course, we had a patio season. We had summer season amongst us, but um, I was really concerned about the fall and winter. And um, uh, and I thought of it, you know what? Like we've got a spa business which may work in, in the fall and winter. And all we got to do is shut down, of course, for a couple, two, three months, whatever it is, but and renovate it. But um, yeah, but that would be it. Like we're lucky to have a plan B. You know? Yeah. Um, if we didn't, then uh, I, I don't know, I'll be every day after summer goes away, I'll be like very cautious, right? Or very like um, concerned because it's a very difficult industry in these times right now. Yeah. And, uh, once a decision came to me, it was pretty easy to execute it because, um, you know, all the other steps followed after that, right? But, uh, but yeah, it was um, definitely hard decision initially uh, because like you said we had put in so much of effort everything in right like it was our vision to create that that best cocktail bar in the city you know to have the vibe to have to leave no stone unturned you know mm-hmm. um, to be smashed away and 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 go towards something which we never imagined initially right yeah no for sure and thanks for sharing that uh um, I mean, we're towards the end here. If you had to share any advice for entrepreneurs or people that are wanting to take the risk, uh, you know, obviously the economy here in Calgary is, uh, especially for oil and gas is definitely struggling. And there's a lot of people who are looking to do other things. What would your advice be for, for, for the folks that want to start their own businesses or their own ventures and just don't know where to start or what kind of risks to take? Yeah, great point, uh, Fukhan. I mean, I uh, I think I mentioned that earlier as well. Please find what you want to do and then just do it. Don't think too much about it, you know. You will figure it out. And the best thing which you can do for yourself is I think to really work on something you love, you know, what, what you want to do. 
to wait for the best time to come, to wait for the transition to happen. Uh, that never happens. And I've, I've talked to so many people in the 50s, 60s who wish they had made a switch earlier. Um, so I, I would say just take the risk. You can see life is anyways like a piece of chess anyways nowadays, but uh, <laughs> yeah. take the risk and uh, you know, go with it. And the more passionate you are about, I have no doubt about it that you'll make it work. Oh, that's awesome. Great advice. And, uh, you know, for the people that want to go to the spa, <laughs> how many locations are there in Calgary? I mean, I could attest, I, uh, I have been once, uh, my lovely partner, uh, booked me a facial for my birthday. So I had an amazing experience. I actually went to the Bridgeland location. So I'm glad that was your first one. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, nice. Awesome. I'm yeah. Glad you heard that for yeah, we have five locations um, right now in the city. Um, Bridgeland, we have two in Bridgeland, Bridgeland and Boutique, we call it. One in um, Calgary Place, which is on plus 15. Uh, one in Beltline, which is 11th Ave, within 6th and 7th Street Southwest. And one in 17th Ave, the new converted bar to a spa. So we have five locations right now. Awesome. That's great. And I'm glad to see you guys expanding. It, you know, uh, you know, you've done a phenomenal job and uh, you should be proud. Um, for people that want to get a hold of you, Gaurav, where can they find you? Uh, they can always email me. My email address is Gaurav, uh, that's G-A-U-R-A-V, at leelaecospa.com. Uh, you can even go to a website and send an email to any of the locations. Or my phone number um, is 587-224-4287. So pretty easy to contact me. And yes, and we want to have a chat or you know whatever it is, just let me know on. I will also time. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks again, Gaurav, for doing this. Uh, I appreciate you sharing your story, you know, giving great advice. And, uh, you know, I wish you the best of luck. And hopefully, mm -hmm. you know, you guys can, uh, or all of us, like, uh, and, and the small businesses in the city uh, yeah. can make it through these tough times and, mm -hmm. uh, and prosper. Indeed. I just want to say one small thing. Um, I really want to thank you for, you know, inviting me to this podcast. I think it's a, uh, it's 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 a great uh, platform to to share views and opinions and uh, and journeys. You know, each one of us has a unique journey and to learn from each other. So it's very engaging. I've listened to a couple of other podcasts as well, which is amazing as well. So yeah, keep on doing great work and support here with the podcast well, too. Thank you. No, I appreciate that. And and Gaurav, uh, I think you know you wanted to mention you've got some other projects on the go. Uh, can you quickly give us a, a bit of a lowdown on these projects? Because uh, I know one of them was really exciting when I, when I was coming to the, your, the, the location on the 17th Ave. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, just quickly on it, um, basically, when the, when the bar shut down, I partnered up with the, with the bar consultant and the bar manager. Uh, his name is JD. Um, JD has got, a, you know, decades of experience creating uh, cocktails in five-star hotels and and be consultant to a lot of other you know, properties as well. So me and him have partnered up and then we have created a brand called Cocktail Concierge where um, the cocktails are in, in a bottle. So uh, nowadays with the bar shut down and with the, uh, you know, people not going to bars as much, you can enjoy um, a glass of five-star cocktail at your own house using these bottled cocktails. Um, we are in a, in a few liquor stores already. We're launching our e-commerce site on Saturday. So, yeah, we're just actively involved in, in promoting this brand. Fairmont um, Palace are just took it up as well to distribute with the New Year's Eve dinner. So, um, feel free to check it out. It's uh, cocktailconcierge.ca. And these are basically six uh, bottle cocktails. Um, and try it out at home. It's really amazing quality. And if you have a cocktail in your house, you're feeling and nothing else. <laughs> Yeah, and there was that sober bartender line too, right? For the people that don't Indeed. drink alcohol but want to so enjoy. <laughs> exactly. So there are two lines. One is cocktail concierge for the bottle cocktails, and one is sober bartender for the non-alcoholic beverages. So you have a guest coming over. What do you offer to them? Right? Orange juice, Pepsi, Coke, whatever. But these are almost cocktail tasting drinks at your home, but without alcohol. So for the sober friend, for you know. You know, whoever doesn't want to, you know, uh, just want to enjoy a nice drink um, at the home, uh, there are some amazing uh, drinks uh, which we have made as well. So, yeah, both are basically meant to be at home drinking, one's non-alcoholic, one's alcoholic. 
and with time we are hoping to uh, you know make this available at more places so people can really get their hands on it. Awesome. No, that's great. Uh, thank you for sharing that. And thank you again, Gaurav, for coming here and uh, sharing your story. I really appreciate it. There you go, everyone. That's the end of the episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you can leave a review, I will really appreciate it. Your reviews will allow me to get better and improve my messaging. Thank you. And until next time.